so I had this all set up, and then people got vulnerable. And see, I'm used to boardrooms and stuffy people that have no emotion. And then I grabbed my notebook. December 18th, 2012. Answers in the chaos. Hoping to make sense of me. Hoping to tell a story, but nobody gives a damn. I'm simple, I'm flawed, I'm wretched, and I'm broken. Those were my words, December 2012. I sat down with my wife on New Year's Eve and said, this year, something must change. Intentional is our mission. The execution, I have no idea. My wife gets very scared when I say things like this. <laughs> I am the guy that finds things to jump off of because they're there. So why wouldn't that year turn into a year that absolutely radically changed my life? Ten days ago, I didn't know I was going to be here. And it was because ten days ago, I was living in L.A. with my wife and two unbelievably hyperactive children. <laughs> Toddlers, 14 months apart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, it's an adventure. I don't think I've slept more than four hours in a year, so that's kind of the, the trend we're on right now. But I didn't know I was going to be here because I was in a job I despised. I was in a state of such anger at all of life's situations that I couldn't see the light of day. So let me backtrack a second. A year ago, I'm going to be intentional. Ten days ago, I don't know where I'm going. Okay? And then the phone rings. I had launched a consulting firm seven and a half years ago. The phone rings and someone says, Mr. Habuda, we are from so-and-so corporation. We are a Fortune 10 company. We would like you to come be an independent consultant for us. We'd like to bring you across the country. We'd like to double your salary. And we would like to make this a reality. And I moved to Tulsa six days ago. So guess what? Everybody comes out of the woodwork at this point. Matt, you're so lucky. Oh. I don't like to hit people, but I thought about it. Matt, you're so lucky. Everything just falls in your lap. Oh, you're so lucky. You get to go someplace you want to go, and you're going to make more money, and everything's grand. You're so lucky. And then I found this quote. Good old Oprah. <laughs> Luck is the result of hard work and preparation meeting opportunity. See, they didn't know about the seven and a half years. They didn't know about the 18-hour days I had put in since I made the commitment to be intentional. They didn't know about that. See, we're going to talk about risky business. You remember the movie? Risky business? Yeah. Different kind of risky business. <laughs> We're going to talk about risky business. And if you want to see dream become reality, you've got to do a little bit of risky business. And I'm not talking just business business. If you want your book to hit the stage, if you want to walk on the stage, if you want a book to hit the bestseller list, you've got to do some risky business. It takes a different type of lifestyle. It takes a different type of behavior. It says, I'm going to stop doing what I've always done because I want results I've never had. I'm going to flip the script on it. I'm going to do this all different. And I'm going to do it on purpose. We're going to do some risky business. In order to do risky business, you've got to start by being resilient. There it is. There is a sense of resiliency that you have to take on. Guess what? You're different. Someone's going to want to punch you. Someone's going to want to kick you. Let them. And then kick back harder. Get up and keep running. Because the life of an entrepreneur is not a straight line. It is an up. It is a down. It is two more downs and three more downs and four more downs. And then you get right back up. Legacies are made out of resilient people. We don't talk about the guy that hit it on his first try. We talk about the guy that endured and was kicked and was beaten and got right back up, okay? So when we talk about being risky, we're going to be resilient. The second thing we're going to be is intentional. I alluded to the fact that I put in 18-hour days for a year. 
That wasn't an exaggeration. I've scheduled every minute of every day since June 3rd of last year to the tune of 18 hours a day. I've had to block off every hour to see my children. I have worked for corporations to pay the bills and I have not slept more than 16, six hours in a year. I have blocked every beach day and made it up on other days. I've put in 24 hour days just to make sure I got time with my boys. There was a reason. I sat down with Sarah on June 3rd and I said, "Hun, if I'm gonna make this dream a reality, because reminding, six years I've been driving on this thing. No traction. I said, if I'm going to get, get the results I want, we're going to change things. I'm going to give it 100% for one year. Give me one year. That's all I ask. Give me one year to give it everything I have. Money, time, resources. I will give it everything. Give me one year. And this dream will be a reality. Because this passion God has put in my heart is not here by accident, and I'm going to get it or I'm going to die trying. The phone call came one year to the day. Yeah. <laughs> to the day. I got intentional, and things started happening. Then you got to be savvy, because guess what? Remember, we get kicked down, right? Let me tell you my unsavvy story. Because I'm going to get kicked. I got kicked hard just a few weeks ago, and it has to do with this. Six years ago, I helped launch a company. I was a partner. It was one of my first major projects. Signed on as a partner. Got some venture capital. We had a fabulous health and nutrition concept. We had $3 million in venture capital from people I'd never met. I put in 300 hours designing the plan. And guess what happens? The day... Before launch, I get a letter in the mail. Mr. Habuda, on behalf of your partner, we would like, you to th like to thank you for your consultative services. We've attached a check for $500, which we feel is fair market value for what you brought to the table. Signed, my partner and his attorney. I was 23 years old, 20, 24 years old. Didn't know whether I was coming or going. Had not put the right paperwork in order and had no leg to stand on. He sold that business 14 months ago for $17.2 million. I was angry. Four months ago, I get a phone call that he did not disclose all necessary details and I was still listed as a member of the partnership. Not awesome. I was being sued. Remember what I said, when you get kicked once, you get kicked twice? I was being sued. Now, lucky I got a little more savvy and I had a good attorney to help me get out of most of it, but I still had to pay. My family is trying to move across the country and I get financially hammered in a lawsuit of something that was six years prior that he drug me out of. But I'm resilient. And I was more savvy than I was before, and guess what? Now I'm knowledgeable. I got a little knowledge now of what I'm going to do next time. I also got some knowledge of his address and where he lives, but that's a different story. Where, I was told I'm not allowed to be like that, so I thank you more. So I got some knowledge, but it's not enough. You must be a relentless pursuer of knowledge if you are going to do risky business. If you are going to change your reality, you have to relentlessly pursue knowledge. I'm at 100 books for 2014 that I have read. 100 books. The goal is 300. What are you doing to get knowledge? Dave and I are switching a book a week. I mean, it's getting a little ridiculous. We are going to have our own library at this point. Tulsa Public is going to go out of business, and we're going to have our own. <laughs> the reality is you've got to gain knowledge. If someone has it to share, take it. I'm be a little vulnerable here. I have offered, and I know many of you in this room have, to share knowledge with people. And we sit there, and we wait, and we have knowledge, and we're giving it away. And we as people are so hesitant to receive from others. Call it ego, call it uncertainty, call it fear, call it whatever you want, but there's the resources out there and people are willing to share. Take the knowledge they have. Whether it's fermented foods, whether it's on how to handle my anger, whether it's a need to encourage people, but people have knowledge, we just gotta receive it. So go seeking knowledge. And the last part of risky business is what I am absolutely passionate about. Be yourself. 
If people put as much energy into being themselves as they do as trying to emulate someone who's already gotten to where they've gone, what would we be watching? What would we be witnessing? What would we be accomplishing? But if I try and stand up here and be Dave, I'm going to fail because I'm not Dave. No matter how hard I try to be because the guy's pretty awesome. But it's just not going to happen. Got to embrace you. So if we're going to do risky business, we've got to be resilient, intentional, savvy, knowledgeable, and at the very core, yourself. But you know what? All this stuff is well and good, but it takes a lot of work. So you better have a reason that drives you. So if you leave with nothing else that I said, leave here with this. What is your why? Why do you do what you do when you don't want to do it? Why do you get up at four instead of five because you're running out of time and need to find more? Why do you get up and run when you'd really rather sleep? Why do you eat fermented foods, and in my case, gluten-free, when you really don't want to? Because if you don't, you're not going to get where you want to be. And the thing is, when it's easy, anybody can do it. But when it gets tough, you better have a why. Here's my four whys. I have two little boys that need a dad that's as much of a leader at home as he is in a boardroom. And it's about time I started leading better every single day, pursuing knowledge of being a father the same way I knew, pursue knowledge of being an entrepreneur. Okay? That number is the number of orphans in the world today. And if I am going to achieve what my wife's organization wants to achieve to impact orphan children in this, in this nation and in this world, I'm going to need resources, I'm going to need time. So I better be doing some risky business so that I can invest in their nonprofit. I better be putting my life and my, my mentality on the line to get there. That third picture is of my lovely family. My two boys, my beautiful wife, and some other funny looking dude. <laughs> the reality is that family loves to do. Put my boys in the house for a day, they go crazy. You put them out on a boat or out doing things, and creating experiences and moments, they're a whole different family. And guess what? I miss them. I miss them because I'm working. I miss them because I'm grinding. And you know what? I'm tired of missing things. So I started doing some risky business, and guess what? I'm working right now. Can you tell? I'm supposed to be at work right now. I'm getting paid to be here with you guys. Because I did some risky business, it flipped the equation, and now I'm in control of my schedule. So when my kids want to go on vacation, we go. When my kids want to go somewhere and experience something, I'm taking them. If my wife wants to go serve in an orphanage, let's go. Because you do risky business to get to places you've never been so you can have an impact you never thought you could have. And the last thing is a mass of people, just like the people sitting in this room. People with dreams and passions and desires and ideas that want to get them out and want to do something with them, but they've been trapped doing average and getting average. They've been trapped investing mediocre and getting mediocre. And they need someone to come alongside them and say, you matter. Yeah. You've got a purpose. You've got an influence. You've got a skill set. And let me nurture it. Let me bring you alongside me. I'm going to speak here. You, hey, take 20 minutes of my time. Come speak with me. They need someone that's going to come alongside them and say, you know what, all that hype that you've listened to for so long, the hype's over. The reality is you're gifted, you're talented, you have skills. This room is full of people that can change the reality of the people around them. If we stop listening to the stories we tell ourselves in the head and start listening to the people that care about us and love us and believe in us. If I'm going to be that person to that mass, I've got to start doing risky business. So if you leave here with nothing else, what is your why and how much risky business are you willing to do? Thanks, guys. Go live your dream.